station. This is Houston. Are you ready for the event? Houston, this is the space station. Ready for the event. Fox News Radio, this is Mission Control Houston. Please call station for a voice check. Station, this is Fox News Radio. How do you hear me? Fox News Radio, hello. I hear you loud and clear, and welcome to the International Space Station. Station, this is Fox News Radio. How do you hear me? Fox News Radio, I hear you loud and clear. Uh, welcome to the International Space Station. Well, thank you so much. It is truly great to be, uh, to be with you. Um, it, it is a, it, it's certainly a pleasure for me as well. I'm a, a big fan and a longtime uh, space reporter in the Space Academy or Space Camp. As it, was, uh, it was called Space Academy back then uh, when I was a kid graduate, so it's certainly a treat for, to, for me to talk to you today, so thank you for your time. Um, uh, Captain, I know that uh, we are coming up on an important uh, and memorable anniversary uh, for space station's operations here uh, in November, and I was wondering if you could take just a moment uh, to tell me about the station as it is now. How, how is the station holding up? Uh, all these uh, all these years into hosting humans uh, in space uh, for uh, for you know uh, constantly. Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and we're very proud of the fact that we've had per personnel living on board the International Space Station for 20 years. Come November, on a personal note, for me, it's especially uh, personal because. The, uh, my mentor, astronaut Bill Shepard, another Navy captain and Navy SEAL, was the commander of Expedition 1, and now I, here I am, uh, the second Navy SEAL to, to fly in space on Expedition 63, 20 years later, kind of bookending, and uh, it's, that's like uh, quite, quite a special thing for Shep and myself. In terms of the space station, uh, it's really doing well. I mean, it is 20 years old. But it's uh, we keep up with the maintenance. We keep we fix and and it's a mechanical thing. So things have broken in those 20 years, and we fix them. And there will be more things to break, and we'll continue to fix those items. But uh, as we live and and float around ab aboard the space station, I really can't help but think it's got a lot of life left in it. And uh, and so 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 it's. Uh, it's really a question of how long our nation uh, desires to fund it, and it, as long as we have the funding and the will, we can keep this thing operating and, and uh, conducting outstanding science on board the International Space Station. Well, it's certainly uh, the wonder of the modern world, and uh, I, I want to recognize uh, not just your service in NASA, but also your service uh, in, in our military. Thank you for what you do and uh, for, for the dual role of keeping us safe and, 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 and pushing our science to the limit. Um, uh, more, if I could, about the space station. You know, as you just mentioned, uh, the, the station can have a long, long life still, and we are at least under the current administration, looking at some very exciting new things in space with a possible lunar return and, and other things. What do you think the station's role will be in this going forward? Um, you know, the, the station is the marvel, but if we start having a lunar gateway and, and things further away from, from planet Earth, uh, there, there will be other marvels, too. So what's the station's job in, in this new era? Well, that, that's a, a, a great question, and um, ultimately things boil down to, to budget in any, in any large program, and, and uh, it is a very, very, as you pointed out, a very, very exciting time to, to live and work in our, our manned space uh, community, well, space in general manned and unmanned at, at this this point in our in our nation's history and uh, as as you say we've got vectors on uh, returning back to the moon and ultimately on to mars and all of that 
in the background with, uh, well, in the forefront really for us, it, uh, you have commercial vehicles flying people now to the space station. As I welcomed Bob and, and Doug just a few, just a month or so ago, a couple months that, ago. And uh, so that's all fantastic and exciting for us to, to be living in the moment. Now, how does space station fare once we start moving into beyond low Earth orbit? My personal opinion is that um, NASA will have to make some tough budgetary decisions and whether or not we can continue to fund the space station in that time frame or maybe we hand it over to com commercial entities to operate and maintain who knows that's that's beyond my pay grade but um, I don't think we can fully man and staff and operate the space station in the current uh, paradigm as well as explore uh, the lunar environment and move to Mars. So, so there'll be some decisions to make and, and we'll make them when, when we get to that point. But the space station itself provides an outstanding test bed for what's needed to conduct those missions and, and live uh, in beyond low Earth orbit. Uh, you, you mentioned the uh, the arrival of um, uh, of contracted spacecraft. Uh, the, the big news, of course, had been the, the SpaceX Dragon. We know Boeing is is on its way to uh, to making their first uh, uh, trek to uh, uh, to the space station. Um, how cool was it to see uh, that first uh, commercial crew arrive? Uh, that, that's um, that's something that's been a long time in in the making, and I know there had been plenty of delays, but. Uh, you know, the, the private sector getting involved in this really does, I think, free up NASA to do some other things with its existing funding, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it, it, it's, it's wonderful all the way around. Your initial question, how cool was it? It was amazingly cool. It was so fun to, to fly directly over the launch pad uh, moments before, two minutes before they, they lifted off, knowing that that rocket was going to make a beeline right for us. And then as, as uh, Bob and Doug and the Dragon were, were on the final stretches of the, of the rendezvous sequence, I just couldn't help get, but get chills thinking about how awesome it was that my friends were in that capsule and we were starting a new chapter of, uh, of the space station and it really uh, exploring a way to explore space beyond what we've traditionally done. So it was just such an honor to be part of it and and have them here for those 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 two months. Uh, just super super cool. And Captain, um, normally when when you do interviews on television, everyone I'm sure asks you to do a, a flip or a roll to demonstrate that microgravity. Um, but people are just going to be listening to us; they can't see you. So. I would like for you to describe in a way that maybe you haven't uh, done for other people, what is it like to float and flip in, in, in the air uh, in, in that environment? Because most people will never obviously get to know that experience. Well, floating around is 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 quite fun, and uh, there's a lot of silly astronaut uh, tricks that happen as we try to to shoot like an arrow as straight as we can for as, as long uh, as we can as float without hitting a wall, or do as you mentioned an, a, a few somersaults and, and see how many somersaults you can do again without and uh, without hitting a wall. Uh, but what's most relatable, I think, to to folks. It are normal everyday things like eating, cutting your fingernails. When you cut your fingernails at home, the clips just fall right to the floor. In space, they fly everywhere. So, and if we're eating, say, uh, a bag of of uh, something small like uh, nuts or M and M's, they will float all over the place. So you need to do these activities really close to an airflow so that you have some sort of thing to to catch to catch it. So just imagine opening up a bag of, of uh, small candies and they float everywhere and they're all around you and you're trying to catch them and they're going into your friend's face. Um, that's where it gets sometimes comical and it gets sometimes 
you wish you had gravity to help you with these everyday tasks. But on a routine basis, we really just enjoy it. And I know I, I just have uh, less than 50 days of enjoying uh, uh, weightlessness for this, this mission. So I'm trying to soak it all in and uh, experience all of those fun things every day. Well, thank you, and thank you to everyone at uh, Houston for patching us through and making this uh, happen for us. Captain Chris Cassidy, the commander of the International Space Station, who is in space, in orbit. Thank you for being on the Fox News Rundown. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thanks for coming aboard the space station. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans living and working on the International Space Station. Thank you to all participants from Fox News Radio. Station, please stand by while we reconfigure audio.